God has revealed himself to the Jewish people and the world at large. And every single creature and being knows that God is the creator of the world, the one who runs the whole world at every moment of creation. And because of that knowledge, every single creature is going to want to only do for God. There is a very interesting question that we can all ask ourselves. What would have been if the golden calf, the sin of the golden calf has never happened? Our minds run what it should have been. I'll tell you one interpretation what it should have been. It should have been that Moses would have come down a couple hours later on time, not like they miscalculated. The Jewish people would have taken the Torah and directly, just as fast as they came to Mount Sinai miraculously, they would have directly taken that and made their way to Israel the center of the world, the center of the universe, built the Bet HaMikdash war-free and have it standing everlasting. It would have been built by Moses, God would have come, and it would have been Yemot HaMashiach, the days of the Mashiach, right then and there. That was God's intention. But, again, the Satan got the better of us, and confusion and conflict was brought to the Jewish people, and the sin of the golden calf came about. There is a pasuk in this week's Torah portion that tells us, and I'll quote to you, it's in chapter 3, verse 12. It says that God takes, He took at that moment, the tribe of Levi in place of the firstborns. I'll quote. He says, God says, I took the Levites, mitoch b'nei Israel, amongst the Jewish people, tahat kol bechor peter rechem mi b'nei Israel v'ayuli halvi'im. He took them instead of all the firstborns to be as their, as God's priests, as the ones who do the service. Our commentaries on this verse tell us. The way it should have been is that the firstborns of every family should have been the ones representing their family in the temple doing the service. That is in this week's Torah portion. There is a Midrash, the Zerashim Shon quotes, that says that Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our patriarch, he tithed his children. He took out one of his children and gave him to God to say, God, he is dedicated to you. And this was Levi, Levi. Took Levi and said, Levi will be specific to you. And they lived up to it because when they came to Egypt and all the other Jews started and fell into slavery, they didn't. They upheld their position and they continued learning the Torah. So, which was it? If the golden calf, the Zerah Shimshon, would have never happened, would it have been the Levi'im doing the service? Or would it have been the firstborns? Or would it have been both? What type of relationship would it have been? It seems like the tribe of Levi, before the firstborns, before the firstborns who were given it, and before they sinned at the golden calf, and it was taken away from them, the Levites were already promised the service in that stature, in that position. So who was it? Who was it going to be if it would have never happened? If the sin of the golden calf would have never happened, who would have been doing the service? He says as follows. That if the sin of the golden calf would have never happened, the Levites would have done the service, and also the firstborns. They would have done it together. But the concept of the gifts the Kohanim received through the service of the temple Whenever someone brought a sacrifice, there were certain parts of the sacrifice to many of the sacrifices that went to the Levim and the Kohanim, to the tribe of Levi. Those gifts were given to the tribe of Levi solely. And the only 
thing that the firstborns would have done was partake in the mitzvot and in the service. They would have been able to come and enter deeper in, unlike, unlike now, unlike, unlike, unlike the way the temple really was. The temple was, the service was, had to be done by the Levim and the Kohanim. If the firstborns would have never sinned by the, by the golden calf, they would have been able to do the service just like the Kohanim and Levim. But the gifts were given specifically to the Levi'im based on the blessing Jacob gave them that they lived up to. And what this comes to teach us is that every good deed goes paid. When Jacob separated them and they lived up to that calling and they did so in Egypt, even if they wouldn't have been taken off from that, Meaning even if the Jewish people would have not have sinned from the golden calf, their lot and their reward was saved for them. But now that the Jewish people sinned with the golden calf and they were taken away from it, then as we read in the Torah, they were substituted fully by the Levi'im. The firstborns were taken and the tribe of Levi completely took that. We have to understand in life that when we do things, sometimes we don't see the merit right away. Sometimes we might not know if we even deserve a merit or not. But if we have good intentions and we do, there is no deed which goes unpaid in a good way as well. We have to know that God has an accounting for us. Everything that we do, Shem sees. Some is rewarded in this world, some in the next. Some to our children, some to our grandchildren. Those are things which are greater than us. They're beyond us to know how and when and who we get rewarded by and how. One thing we do know is that Kadosh Baruch Hu is there, is watching. And in retrospect, sometimes we're given that enlightenment and that inspiration to see where our efforts and our struggles all got repaid. May Kadosh Baruch Hu give us the strength never to give up, always to keep on trying, always to push forth. Not doing it for the reward, yet at the same time knowing that we will be rewarded for what we do. Kadosh Baruch Hu bless us in the merit of the Torah study that we learned in the merit of the Zerah Shemshon Baruch Hu Adonai Lohnam Amen Amen